Uh, my name is Joel Spencer, and um, I'm very pleased to be here. I've really enjoyed Madrid so far, and look forward to meeting many of you. So I want to just talk uh, kind of generally about um, using light to, um, to study different um, um, processes in vivo. And actually, I need to learn how to switch the page. Okay, so I've worked on several different studies. I'm just showing a couple examples here. The one on the top left um, was an um, islet transplantation model in living mice, where you put the islets under the kidney capsule, and then we, um, using fluorescent trackers from uh, different genetic, genetically modified animals, we were able to follow different populations of T cells. Um, we have T effector cells, regulatory T cells, and also converted regulatory T cells. And then, um, so you can use optics to present. So anyway, so um, here I'm just showing that you can also follow the immune response in the peripheral circulation using basically in vivo flow cytometry where you focus light onto a blood vessel and you look as, as the cells pass by, they give little blips here. Um, and so we could follow the progression over days to weeks and you could even do months if you like. Um, the next organ is a skin. This is um, an example intravital image um, in a living animal again, where we had different populations of mesenchymal stem cells that we transplanted, um, and then we followed how they um, home to the tissue. And use, because it's a video rate system, you can actually quantify the rolling kinetics in vivo. And so this is two examples here. Um, you, I could give you the paper on this if you'd like. And then the bone marrow um, in, in the mice, because the Calvaria bone marrow is very thin, you can actually access it um, easily with light by just cutting open the scalp and then imaging through the bone. And that's what I did here. This is the, the blood vessels in red and the blue is the bone using psychoharmonic generation. And this is an example here where we transplanted mesenchymal stem cells. Um, early time point, most of them are in the vessel. 24 hours later, most of them have extravasated. So um, recently I just, um, I'm working on publishing this paper, but I built a system to actually now quantify partial pressure of oxygen in the tissue and combine it with intravital imaging. So this is useful for a case here in the bone marrow. Um, I showed this image earlier, but at the screen spot, I can actually measure the PO2 quantitatively using the phosphorescence quenching method. Um, and so some, just some general results is that um, in comparing the vasculature in the bone marrow versus the cortical bone and the periosteum, this is a membrane around the bone, we found that the bone marrow vessels are the most hypoxic compared to these other tissue beds, and the extravascular space is, is, is the most hypoxic in the bone marrow, and it, it depends on where in the bone marrow you are, and this is important for understanding how oxygen plays a role in um, hematopoiesis. So I'm really kind of just painting a broad brush here. Sorry about that, but these are some of my interests. Um, for the sake of time, I won't go into them, but I'm, like Bevan just mentioned, I'm open to many other ideas, so if you have some good ideas, um, please talk to me. And this is my contact information. Thank you very much.